everybody, welcome to Board Game Smorgasbord. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Mike Delisio. I'm Z Garcia. And we're back. It's been a, a, a day or two since we've been live. Uh, but the three of us are here live twice today. Once I was, now. I was live yesterday, Tom. I don't know about the rest of you guys. I was live we yesterday. We have done nothing <laughs> for the past couple days. I was live during what's happening and then I fell asleep and woke up uh, six, seven minutes ago. Wow. When I'm not live, I am not you're, aware. He's like a robot. Yeah. <laughs> He goes into the deep Sh sleep. Shuts down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're today, later today, we're doing our top 10 anticipated games of 2023 that are so anticipated by me that I forgot what they are for me. I'm going to have to go oh look at my, my gosh, list. This is I have a couple of them that are, that are yeah, not going away from in here, but I'll tell you what, I had to eliminate a lot of stuff because it's just crossover with previous years. <laughs> I did not mention any of that stuff. It would be a very different list if I mentioned any of those. I'll they probably were... repeat this later, but I could have easily done a top 50 of these. I love the anticipated games list. Mike I is such really a that cult many? of the future guy, man. Mike I is love so, stuff. is the biggest cult of the future, cult of the new. <laughs> you are. A new you game are. comes to the office I and Mike am. will stop everything he's doing and yeah. be like, I need to look at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah I love yeah. that stuff. I don't know why. Yeah. I could have done a 20, I think. Yeah. It's a good, it's a good batch. It is. All right, well, here's the thing. We're talking, uh, we have a couple things we want to mention here at the very beginning of our episode. First of all, we have a contest for you all. Uh, this episode is of Smorgasbord is sponsored by Bezier Games. And we have a contest for a game called Silver. Um, Silver is a game in which you're put collecting cards in front of you. It has kind of a werewolf theme to it, mm -hmm. and it's compatible with another game called... Silver Bullet? Yes. yes. Nailed it. <laughs> uh, but you can win silver. All you have to do is email us at contest.dicetower.com. In the subject line, put the word beholder. And answer this mm. question. Yep. What's the largest number of cards possible for a player to choose from on a single turn? One. I was say cards. Two. So use your deduction. Two. And you're choosing from... So by minimum, it has to be two. You can't choose from one card. What? <laughs> okay. I just thought of this, and this is going to show my ignorance, I'm sure, but... Mm -hmm. Done. The, that, that phrase, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? That far predates that D&D &D character of the beholder, right? Is yes. there, was, that, was there a play on that? Did those two things have anything to do with each other? I don't think so at all. Beauty and the Eye of the Beholder is old, old. That's what I'm saying, but the Beholder is basically just... He's looking at stuff. Behold. Right. I'm just wondering if there's a... I don't think so, Mike. I understand what you're saying. The yeah. fact that he has many eyes yeah. makes you think that that phrase has the word it, eye. It, I was wondering if they were like but playing off But to behold of something implies eyes. So, yeah. no, I don't think so. Beauty is in the many eyes of the Beholders. Mm. Um, also, check out their game Sink or Swim, which you can see in the background here. Um, it's a co-op party game where you and your teammates are diving in to race against the clock to sync up as fast as possible. We also are want to say thank you to some of our Kickstarter backers. We want to say thank cool. you to Curtis Linden, yes, to Ray Suchier, to Pedro and Noni, to Lee Wheeler, whose birthday is coming up very soon. Ooh, happy birthday, birthday, man! Well, Preemptive. It's, Happy birthday. It's next week, but we're going to be on the cruise next week, so we're doing it now. Birthday. That's right. Um, and uh, to, uh, let's see, where else am I at here? I also want to say thank you to Chuck Reed, to Jay Satterway, to Kyle Oliveira, to Daryl Shannon. <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> no, no, nah, hold nah, on nah, now. No. Hold on now. There's no, no way. Kyle Olive Oliveira. Yes, that's Oliveria. what I said. And to <laughs> Daniel Orn <laughs> Stephenson. It's so funny, neither of us saw the name and we both just intuitively yeah, went, no, like, no, no. There was some, <laughs> no, 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 some loose vowels in there. <laughs> All right, so, very important. We're running a Kickstarter mm. right now. You can find that information at DiceTowerKickstarter.com. If you we're, we're getting close to funding. Mike wants close. us to fund today. That's I'd love said. for us to fund like during our top ten later on. That yeah. Was yeah. That because so Kenny's good. nowhere was in the business. Right. right. Mainly we can right. yeah we can avoid the horns of of uh, of the Kenneth. The horns of Sardina. Yeah. Yeah. Squawk. Beauty is in the horns of Sardina. <laughs> but anyway, if 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 you are interested in backing another year of the Dice Tower, we would like to fund so that we can be back, let's say, in two weeks. That would be nice. Now, we're funded yes. to the end of January. You got us till then. Okay. So, okay. It's looking good. There's doom lots of cool things. and gloom. <laughs> no, no, not doom and gloom. Alrighty. Well, we have a lot of stuff to go over today in our episode, so let's start with the news.
All right, folks, let's start with uh, something we knew about for a while because they were showing it off at Gen Con, but this is the Yawning Portal Tavern, mm -hmm. um, which is a very cool part of D&D in the sense of this. this what end, is it? It's, it's an end set around this gigantic portal. A portal like to another realm or something? I think it's like to various realms and dungeons. So lots of people are stopping here on their way in to go fight. All right. It's okay. a very convenient plot device. Sure, sure. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, but this is definitely a Euro-style game. It's You can pre-order it on Hasbro Pulse, mm -hmm. and the game is scheduled to deliver in mid-January 2023. From my end of things, I don't know why I would use Hasbro Pulse, and I would just wait till it's out in stores. Uh, frankly, because that's what happened with their previous games. They've yeah. done. The designers came up to the booth at Essen, and they were they're very excited about this design. They can't wait for people to check it out. I'm I'm interested. I mean, I, I I'm with you. I think this is a slightly different angle to the D and D kind of uh, theme. I'm looking forward to it. I am not. Fantastic. <clears throat> All right. Well, maybe you're excited about this next one. <clears throat> My city, roll and build. So My City, which is not a roll and write, but essentially played like one, right? Um, and it was a legacy style game, one of the few original legacy games that's mm -hmm. not based on another game. Okay. Uh, so this is coming into retail quarter two. Um, wow, that's a weird way to phrase this. It says My City Roll and Build is part of the Spiel des Jahres nominated series of games. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What does that mean? That it means that My City was nominated. <laughs> It's a way. It's a it way is. to make to aggrandize that. It makes it sound much. Well, bigger it says than... Aqualand. Was Aqualand nominated? Never heard of Aqualand. Aqualand. Okay. Oh, Aqualand. We Aqualand is now That's part an of the series. That's old game. Yeah. Anyway, my city is no. an interesting Can game. Where basically, what? it's almost in the bingo esque style of games where you yes. draw one and everyone has that same mm -hmm. city input. Out. Have you played my city? No. I played. I played both. I played my city, and then I brought a copy okay, of this back wow. from from Essen because they had a German copy there. But there's very little text on it, right? There is some text on it. But why I, are we here? Why are we here? It's a small box. It was like 15 euro. And, Wait, is this uh, the news you said we wouldn't care about? Yes, got it. Um, and so uh, I've played through the first. I haven't gone through the whole thing because there's like. Different is it paths. a legacy yeah, thing? Yeah, kind also? of, sort of. Yeah, where you go through the different <sighs> sheets and they kind of build off of each other and add new rules. It's very simple. Um, you're just drawing the polyominoes in. It's essentially the same type of game. You Did know? you assume we wouldn't care because you were going to be all like, oh, I've played it, I have it? I assumed you wouldn't care because it was uh, a Kinesia thing. No, I, I like Kinesia, man. I like my I city. Like this. Thank you, Todd. Oh, yeah, thank you, Todd, for the super chat. I like. Oh, yeah, and Todd says, have you ever gone back to a game initially, rate it bad, and then up the rating? Well, possibly. Yes. Oh, Watch yeah. my look back every Absolutely, Absolutely I have. Absolutely, I have. As a matter of fact, Cthulhu Death May Die, I think my rating would be maybe two points higher than I originally rated it. Yeah. But anyway, I like my city. I think it's a fine game. Yeah. I'm starting to get worn out on draw polyomino roll and rates. Yeah. I yeah. like, roll rates are fine. I just don't, these polyomino ones, like this picture, mm -hmm. that looks very nice and neat. My board will never look that nice and neat. I think that's my issue with the ones where you draw shapes that abut one another. Mm -hmm. Is those shapes then look like one shape? It starts to get you know, especially if I need to delineate where one sure. one thing ends and another begins. Right. They start to really get messy. I they can't do. tell where the thing ends. Well, that's why you do the different symbols. But I, you know, look. Don't tell me how to play this roll is, and write, uh, Mike, Okay. My city, like you said, is almost a roll and write. I. I think this is cute, but I think it's very, uh, it's, it's, un, it's completely unnecessary because I would just prefer to play my city. I'm looking forward to my island, which is the follow-up. Yeah. yeah, my city is one of the lesser legacies because yeah, you can play it almost as, as a normal game. Right. I think what's after game six? At the, yeah, you can they, game mode, six, they're basically. like, here's a whole game you can play now right. without. So you play six times with things building up? Yeah. And then they're like, okay, just no, no, keep no, no, no. You can keep building up. There's like right, 15 can. games. I'm saying after six, though, mm -hmm. you can then flip the board over and play a full game, essentially, that feels like a decent Kinesia game. Mm -hmm. and Without you, stuff building yeah, up. Yeah, and then it's stuff just kind of weird. Oh, they added railroads and whatever else yeah. I'm spoiling. All mm -hmm. right. Okay. Okay, well. All right. Let's go to Pyramids. Yes. Which is still on my bucket list of things I'd like to see someday. I've never seen the pyramids, and I want to. I'd like to see the pyramids both in Egypt and in South America. You actually have a higher chance of seeing the South I know, American ones. I know, yeah. yeah All yeah. right. P 
Pyramido here. This is from Synapsis Games. This is an abstract tile placement game. Um, and you are building a pyramid of 20 tiles and four fours to end the game. This is coming out this fall. So I'm assuming Essen. Cool. Yeah. Very nice cover. Mm -hmm. But look at this next cover. I'm stoked about this one Terra right here. Let me see. Pyramids. <clears throat> oh, more pyramids. Hold yep. up. This, yeah. These pyramids put that last pyramid to shame. That's a really great cover. It is. Wow. I like that a lot. Anyway, this one here is from Kramer Kiesling. A new I mean, Kramer and Kiesling. And Korea Board Games. That's really I cool. Mean, that that's a really cool. great combo. Is this a brand new game, you as think? As far as I'm aware, it's a brand new game. They seem to be coming out with a brand new game at least once a year, because they just did Paris a couple years ago. Yeah. Yeah. They did something else last year. I forget what it was. Renature was theirs. Renature yes, Renature. was theirs, too. Think, yeah, this yeah. is... I just think it's very cool that, uh, you know, Korea Board Games is getting... These, you know, they've been working, they've worked with Kinesia. We mentioned Kinesia yeah. before. They've worked with some pretty big uh, designers. And, and, you know, just being at Essen for the first time, those things start to make more sense because you've got people from all over the world that are meeting now. You know what I mean? And, and you know, I don't know. I just think it's cool. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a stunning the looking The board game. doesn't look great. No, it looks very <laughs> kind of what you'd expect. Unfortunately, a, a but, to but like, we'll yeah. see. And I also want to see the dimensionality of the board. Like, if I'm doing building pyramids, I wouldn't mind if I see some pyramids going oh, up. Oh, I you see, know? Mm -hmm. I see. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that scream, like, those boards with that cover, to me, anyway, screams, this is an old game where we reprint it, yeah. With an eye-catching new cover, but we can't really change the boards that much from an old edition. It doesn't look that different from something like Mexico. Or, yeah, you know what I mean? it kind of looks, it has that feeling of, yeah, we reworked it. Look mm -hmm. at this new cover. Right. The game, we, we can't change. It's a, it's a classic. We yeah, can't yeah. really do much. But, hey, maybe it'll be a new classic, you know? Modern classic, some people might say. Hey, next time, and we are going to do the best board game cover voting again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is going in the, in the, in the pile. I mm -hmm. really like this you one. You got it. <laughs> All right. Time capsules. This is coming from Lifestyle Board Games. And there are weird round capsules that are going back in time to collect artifacts from the past. What? So they this had a like limited release too. at Essence Spiel 2022. We have a... Yeah, this looks familiar. Yeah. Is that a why this looks here. familiar? Okay. Yeah, but it's not like a... It, ours says your logo there. I think they're still looking for a, uh, sure. a, a partner. Yeah. I can't wait for that round capsule thing. Mm -hmm. To be a cube, oh, and this to be time capsules roll and write. Let's do it. <laughs> roll because you know if this is popular enough, mm -hmm. that will come, and that's all really they have to do is change that to a giant die. <laughs> Bam! There's the it's cover. Done. You know what I mean? It's done. It's cool. It's a. It's a. The scope of this is working for me. Yeah, that I little like person that right there giving it all scope. Mm -hmm. It's like wow, those are enormous orbs. Yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of small in scope, let's go to one of Mike's favorite companies, Helvetik. Um, they make little small games that I generally don't like, but Mike likes some of them. I like some. More. I yeah. like some. I like some of them. Yeah. This one is a cute looking one called Bubbly. I love the theme. Uh, this is coming out in February, and you are a soap bubble trying yes, not are. to pop. What? I love that. <laughs> yeah. That's a great theme. <laughs> you are a soap. You are. A, how many times have you wanted to be a soap bubble, Z? I mean, I, countless times. Do you think like, a soap bubble has like the shortest lifespan of anything you can think of? <laughs> Name something with a shorter lifespan than a bubble. A fart. <laughs> no. Wow. No. I'm sorry. I've been in the room sometimes. It's not. That's true. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've been around some farts that are basically Methuselah. Wow. Okay. That's true. I think you're right. Ooh. It does depend <laughs> on the species Ooh. of the flatulence. Folks, I apologize. <laughs> well, I just want to be clear. I just want to be clear that I don't endorse this type of behavior. Anyway, this is, these are all very simple little games. We'll take a look at the next one. Is Happy Bee. You, you, instead of being a bubble, be a bee. This yeah. is a drafting game. But look at the designers here. Maxime Ramberg and Theo Rivera. I, like I know so Theo Maxime a lot. Maxime did uh, Big Book of Madness. Yes. Oh. And, and, and Tail. Also, and, yeah. and, and also worked with Tail on, um, there's another game that I really like that they worked on together. That for oh. the life of me. Is it about pyramids? Was it The Loop, I think they did it together. Oh, okay. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, that's cute. Yep. And I, then, I just hope it's better than that, like, pick up prickly cacti. That ouch game? That yeah, was not yeah, very yeah, good. Yeah. I didn't like ouch mm -hmm. very much. No. All right. Watch out! This is the next game that they're coming out with. And this one, 
you are driving through a city, but there's zombies, and there's, they're hiding in the population. There's something about these cards that make you want to play this game so bad. This looks like a speed game, though, possibly. I hate speed games, but I love the look of these cards. I just love the idea of playing cards out that kind of show where you are. You know, yeah, yeah. I'm assuming it's like yeah, you're, one of those you're, like you're flip flipping and... cards over, and then you're putting them, and you got to change lanes. And if there's a zombie, you have to shout "zombie." There's no way you're gonna like this. No, game. no I don't like I the agree. that sound of that, but I love the look of these cards. All three of these have a great look. Yes. You got to give it to them for picking weird themes with great looks. And they usually put them in small packages, yeah. sometimes weird shape boxes, which I don't always love. I think they've mostly gone away they from the l- super long, long skinny boxes, right? Right, they, they mostly have, yeah. They've come, yeah. they've come back to more standard, but still small yeah. boxes. All right, next we have really loud librarians. <laughs> so, for those of you who were not around in the 80s and 90s, librarians went around shushing people mm. all the time. That doesn't mm-hmm. seem to happen anymore. No, they all died. Libraries, at least down here in Florida, are quite loud places, actually, sometimes. Um, this is... The publisher describes this as categories meet Super Mario Kart, which makes me go next. But and even yeah. that board doesn't look very good. But I'm hoping there's something. This here. is Exploding Kittens, right? The the publisher behind Exploding Kittens that yes. is doing this. Oh, so it's okay. probably going to be in you know Target. It's also stores. twenty bucks. So yeah. there's that. Yeah. Um, but it combines wordplay yeah. with yelling. Oh, I'm in. Yeah, yeah. I'm in. Designed the, to support the fun groups part of over that... two players. What? <laughs> Okay, so you're racing around this thing, I guess, and yelling yeah, you, words? You need to yell out examples of words from the current category and play as you're moving around this track. Okay. That's All really right. basic. That's, though, right? I got it. Yeah. Ah, movies, oh, the, um, Star Wars, and then you go to the M, and you're like, oh, I can't even think of one. Mavatar. Mad Max. All right. Mavatar. Mavatar. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This next game I'm very interested in looking at. This is from Hachette, um, from Gigamic, and this one is called Kawail. Uh, Kowale? Kowale, maybe? Whatever. I you... saw this. Actually, I did not realize this was new because I just, a little while ago, like a week or two weeks ago, saw a video of someone explaining several uh, 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 Gigamic or Gigamic games. Mm-hmm. And this was one of them. So I'm guessing this has been out in other places. It was a foreign video. Perhaps, yeah. Um, it looks interesting. And the those shapes that kind of look like stones are these wooden pieces. You're stacking them up mm. and, and everything. Those are wood, huh? But okay. it's got, yeah, they are actually wooden, but they look like stones. And it's got a uh, Mancala type thing where you okay. pick up a stack and then drop them off one at a time. It looks really classy, though. Yeah, I, like, I love I like the, the look, look of it. It does look nice. The Gigamic is probably best known for Corridor. That's probably, probably their most well known. But they make a lot of these games. There's and they a, are popular. I mean, they are very popular. popular. They go around to uh, teaching. Um, conventions. Mm-hmm. They're one of the few companies that pushes these. I believe that. Speaking of uh, uh, abstract games, the Matrix GIF. Is this the other piece? This is those? the one I thought I knew about be, this. I thought I, you'd be excited about I this. I just well, heard about this like yesterday and mm-hmm. I was excited about it. I am it. a little worried because it. I never played GIF, but it was also when I read the rules. It's why I'm least interested in this. By the way, this is a terrible name. I mean, I get the four-letter names, Gip, Yinch, or what, you know, now it's two words. It was actually, it was always was five, mostly five letters, and that Gip is the only one that's four. Yes, but, but now we have a word that's clearly like Matrix without the I. Mm. At this point, we've delved into stupidity. It's actually Matt uh, Rx. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new pharmacy. But um, this is like a standalone or an expansion. What I suspect this is, mm-hmm. knowing Gip and knowing all of that, I think this is a box, because they're specifically saying this is a standalone, or can be used as an expansion to GIF. Mm-hmm. This is all the potentials that came out for GIF oh, collected in one cares? box. Mm-hmm. This is not new content. If my assumption is correct. Okay. Okay, so when GIF came out, they sold these sort of expansion packs. Well, okay. They call them potentials. Yeah, potentials, and they had pieces in there that sort of used the powers from the other games in the series, and you could incorporate that into GIF. Got it. You could, like, cap a piece with a new piece, and that one now could jump in a straight line. It could eat another piece, whatever. I think that's what this is. Mm. All of those potentials collected. To be fair, those are getting pretty hard to find, and one of them was really hard to find. I've got a couple of them. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's any technically new gameplay here, except for, well, I guess he figured out a way to play without GIF at all, without, like, the base layer, just the the new stuff on top. So. Mm. Are we going to see Yinch? 
Matrix Yinch. I'm just I can't a little wait. confused about that. Can't wait. All right. We're still in the rolling rights. This one even more uh, so than the last one. We have Blueprints of Mad King Ludwig, which... <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. So there's a, some cool... There's one cool thing is I like that the card shows the shape, but you yeah. can kind of slide it on your screen to figure out where to put the shape. Well, and you trace over it, I assume. That's cool, but I'm telling you, that picture that they're using for the demo looks messy, mm -hmm. and that worries me because mine isn't going to look that good. No, no. I like the concept of, you know, drawing out this. Now, is this based on the Blueprints? Isn't there a Blueprints game? There's a Blueprints game. Right? No, there's a Blueprints game that's a, that's a dice game. Yeah, that's a different that's a stack, It's a stacking yeah. game. Stacking of dice to fit a particular three-dimensional image. What is the roll and write that, where you draw Blueprints called? I know there's one. Yes, there is. Um, is it... Is there a ground floor or something like that, or no. uh, maybe someone in chat knows? Yeah, but yeah. I know that there was. I know there was one where you're drawing parts of a house. It was from Floodgate or from uh, one of those companies. Deep water, De or deep water or Floodgate. Yeah, made yeah. One. Oh, I don't know. My thing here is just that. Again, this is similar to the thing we were talking about with my city. Why not just? I mean, why? Why? Right. You know what I mean? Right. You could just put what? out little pieces. You know, I, I don't. I don't. Again. I understand the why you are wanting to give us the game that just has floor plan. Sheets Thank you, Seth. Of, floor plan, yeah. You know, just sheets of paper without making like tiles. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. You can make anything a roll and ride right. if you remove enough pieces <laughs> and put enough work on me. Yeah. At some point, someone's just going to come out with a game that has sheets of paper, mm -hmm. pair of scissors, colored pencils, and just make me design a game before I start playing. Yeah. That's not a roll and write. Mm hmm. And no, put some components in there. Well, I don't know that this is called a roll and write. This is just... This is a flipping color. This is blueprints. Yeah, but of, I mean, uh, I, I, we'll see. Maybe this is it's the, good. Uh, the, this is the self-checkout line, uh, the, the board game, right? You okay. do the work. Yeah, yeah. We've, we, we've taken, you know, we're going to make you feel like you're getting a benefit by doing more work. Yes. Well, this is definitely a week of the small spin-off things, because mm -hmm. now we got Camel Up the card game. Oh. Which is another game I'm not interested in because <laughs> Cam Up is a fantastic game. Why do I need a card version of it? I'm also game confused be because I was telling, I think I said this to you yesterday, Tom, there has already been a game called Camel Up Cards. It already exists. You're what? right. You're right. And I'm assuming this is a different game. Wait, there's a game called Camel Up Cards? Yes. Uh, yeah. I've never heard and of that. And this is Camel Up the Card uh, game. Camel Up Cards, you're right. This was, uh, and that, it, this, it came out in 2016. Replaces most of the components of the original game with cards. I what? wonder... I gave it a 5.5. I did not like it because... I've never heard of this. Because I was like, why play this when you can right. play Camel Up? And this does not look like the same game, right? It looks a little like the same game. Does it? Yes. Did they just re-spruce re it? And... Well, look. Here's a picture yeah. of the card game. Okay. And then there's the picture of that. It doesn't look quite exactly the same. I bet they just kind of re-implemented a little bit, maybe changed well, a couple Well, let's take a look at the designer, yeah. Stefan Bogan. So that's the designer of the original game. And Camel Up Cards was designed by Stefan Bogan. Yeah. So, I don't know. They haven't put it on Board Game Geek yet. Okay. I, I guess when they do, we'll know because they might say it's a re-implementation huh. of it. Mm. It's a cool new look. I mean, again, I think the new look of Camel Up, the, the sort of second right. editions of it all have, have been better. You know what? I think that maybe that's what it is, is that maybe that card, Camel Up Cards was kind of the old graphical yeah. style. Maybe this is just yeah, bringing it to, to the To match new. the new one. Yeah, yeah that that's probably sense. what it is. I'm less excited mm. when you guys have experience with this. Mm. Now, talking about things getting big, though, let's talk about Arthurian Knights, a game that I wanted to play 15 years ago. Mm. For goodness sake, it's taken them so long to get this out. A lot of people are very excited this. Is about a follow-up to Tales of Arabian Nights, but set in Arthurian days. And there's a lot of changes to the game. It's not quite the same. It's no longer... It still has a gigantic, gigantic book. And I asked something to the effect of, can we just put this on an app? And it was like, nah, book. <laughs> because apps are money. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't use... The the matrix where like if you meet a beggar you can't like beat the beggar give money to the beggar you know bless the beggar there's like mm. a remember you uh -huh, can just yeah, switch yeah. all these things there's it's it's more focused than that you still have lots of different choices but I think it's specific to 
Like that entry tells you the things you can do. I like that. That'd be good. This, this was at Dice Hour Retreat. Oh, okay. And because uh, that right. brought it and they played it. But I do know it says here it's a 120 to 180 minutes. That is, I know for sure that that is low end. Yeah. They took four plus hours to play it. Okay. It is a long game. I don't mind that per se if you're involved in it the whole time and everything. I'm cautiously very optimistic about this. This is not really, and they are not saying, and, and it's fine. This is not a modernization of Arabian Nights. Right, right. It is the same design. Well, not okay, it's not the same designer. It's Andrew Parks, but Andrew Parks right. was definitely involved with, you know, at least writing Andrew, the stuff for the original one. And Andrew Parks is not known for making brief games. No, uh, that, short that's games. also I true. really like Andrew Parks, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. I think he's a great designer. Again, my thing, my and, and maybe I'm in the minority here. I would love to have a game like that that was tighter. Maybe they're doing that. That was shorter. They're definitely not doing mm. that. That was more digestible, I guess. I have one. It's called Lands of Galzer. Um, the the thing that, that's odd to me about the, the book, or not odd, but I think that actually makes sense for it to be a book rather than an app, and maybe this is just me, but... This and the original are both based off of works of literature, and so it kind of makes more sense yeah. that you're reading a book. I no, I get that. that. I'm not going to argue that strongly against yeah. the book. I'm fine with that. The thing I'm excited about is this theme, because for as popular as a theme as, as a book, like yeah. I read so many versions of this, this is barely in board games. You're right. It is. That's true. It's for like Shadows over Camelot. It's public and, domain. Yeah, it's not a lot of it. Well, actually, mm. Andrew Parks did a game called Camelot um, Legends. Camelot Legends, which mm. I actually like. Um, but there's not a lot of King Arthur. Yeah, there's not a lot. Games. You're right. It's true. I'm trying actually to think of there's Merlin. one other that uh, Merlin. Yeah, there's, there's a lot one of that, Merlin games yeah. that I don't uh, even know if I count those. Because Kramer has one that came out from Malaya. Oh, Canizia did that weird one with the ink. The ink that read the he made that technological game before apps. It never oh, came out in English. Oh, oh, it was yes. only in German. I don't know and as you moved your piece on the board, the board figured out where your piece was. Uh, yeah, I remember. It was a huge flop. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't recall that. Yeah. All right. So last piece of news here mm -hmm. is, well, Marvel United. So a couple <laughs> things about Marvel United. First of all, tune in live tomorrow. We're showing off, we're playing Marvel United in some interesting ways. We can't tell you until tomorrow morning. You'll see them um, for their upcoming uh, Kickstarter campaign, which starts next week. This, though, is not part of the Kickstarter campaign. This one is going straight to retail, and I believe it's the first one to do so. Many other games have gone to retail, yes. huh. um, the base games, but this expansion is going to retail only. It's not even part of the Kickstarter. What? No, and it's, count, it's counting as a new core box. So this is a new core box that you can play, that you can get just on its own. Okay. Or you can incorporate it into the other... Marvel United Games system. And what's also interesting is that this is basically going to make it so that they're not doing two-wave shipping. Because this is going to basically take the place of two-wave shipping. So there's going to be one-wave shipping for their new multiverse campaign. Okay. This is going to be coming out first, if I understand that right. Okay. Is that how you read that, Tom? Uh, that is very interesting. Yeah. So this is the core box for the new wave, but it's not really part of that Kickstarter. Right. It's a core yeah, box. Yeah, it's part it's... of the multiverse, which is what their new Kickstarter is yeah. based on. Sure. Um, yes, it does say that. It says it will fill in for the usual advanced wave one. That's fantastic. Yeah. I had not heard of this. This should make everybody happy, right? I think so, Because all the people so, who back yeah, the game right. going, oh, you can buy it at Walmart. Well, you, not, you can go buy it That's at Walmart. Pretty well, it's much crazy. the only way, and yeah. you can get Marvel United right now for like, $8. It's like seven which seventy is one or something right value. now. Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. So when is this supposed to be coming out? Do we have any idea about that? They they say. I thought it was... Uh, they gave us a, a range of when it's supposed to be coming out, I think. Oh, it says mid. Mid-year. Yeah. Mid-year. Okay. Mm -hmm. wow. That's not that's not very helpful. That's not but soon, but... Mm -hmm. That's I can interesting. See around Gen Con, maybe, you know? Yeah. This looks cool, though. So mm -hmm. on the front cover, we see Scarlet Spider. We see Spider Noir. We see... Spider Punk, which I don't know a lot about and hate already. Mm -hmm. um, symbiote Spider in the background. Uh, is that Man Spider or just what's the guy in the Spider? I don't know who they all Iron are. Spider. Huh? Iron Spider. Iron Spider. Then that's Silk mm -hmm. in the very center, one yeah. of my favorite characters. Yeah. And then the bad guy is um, 
It looks like uh, uh, Mr. Sinister a little bit. No, I don't know who we, that is. We but. mentioned, uh, we, we, looked looked, we looked it up yesterday, and I can't remember what the guy Oh, was. and there's another villain in the corner. Is that blank, I think? Um, the white with the big dot or spot. I don't remember what they're called. Okay, that's cool. Honestly, there's so many things that they've done in the multi-Spider-Verse that they could have done a whole Kickstarter on just that. Yeah. Yeah. That's so. neat, though. If you're a Spider-Man fan, wow. Talk about not coming no out kidding. of the park, right? No I mean, here's, here's all the goodies. Yep. All right, folks. That's the news. All right, welcome back to Board Game Smorgasbord from Plate to Table, where we talk all things 3D printing uh, on this wonderful show. So today I'm going to take a look at a program, it's a free program called Tinkercad. Now this is essentially a CAD software, which is a design software, in which you can take geometrical shapes, 3D shapes, build them, put them together. Now I'm pretty rough at it, but I have come up with some interesting designs for stuff we use in the show. And if you're watching this and you're on the cruise, you'll see it on the last night of the show in our clothes are those little purple stands that hold those things up that is made from tinkercad on here and then printed on my ender elgu neptune 3 pro so let's take a look at what you can do in tinkercad and we'll come back up talk final thoughts hopefully you're having a great time on the cruise i'm there as well hopefully i've already had a game of western legends in at this point because while you're watching this we're mid cruise eating all sorts of good food and doing some amazing stuff so find me uh let's play a game if you're watching this through the really <laughs> slow internet package. Uh, let's play a game, let's hang out, uh, and then, you know, just looking forward to being there. So, let's take a look at Tinkercad. All right, so this is Tinkercad. I've got a couple shapes already out here. The shape in the back there, the red one, that's gonna be a stand that we use in the closer to our show. I've made it, modeled it, and tapered it to where it should nest in each other, but uh, you'll see this if you're on the cruise, actually. But you can select things and break them apart back into their original shapes and kind of see those are holes, so to dig the holes, you have to put the holes in and then you click combine shape and it will make those holes cut out a negative space in whatever you have. So when you click combine here, and then we've got the football shape, see, now we've got the hole cut out. The football shape here, I've also got a uh, hole, football shape, uh, the bomb shape, I don't know. I'm trying to here cut the hole and I keep clicking the wrong one, but if you click the bottom one, click it as a hole, now you have this space into which you have, now I've clicked too much and it didn't grab it, but you combine all of this to where you kind of get this tapered end just at the bottom there. So it looks like almost like an exhaust area coming out of the back of this uh, bomb. So it's easy to kind of play around with how you can cut things and shape things. There's all sorts of tools in here so that you can uh, do, do all kinds of things. Like this is very basic geometry here, but there are so many things that you can do. So now it's all combined into one shape. It looks like that. It's, it, so if you go to print this, it's one solid shape instead of broken down into parts. Um, <clears throat> you can take any of these shapes out here and adjust them how you want. Yeah, they're still polygonal for some what you're not going to get a perfectly smooth shape in this. Even if you add several sides and steps to it, you're still going to get some polygon to it. But again, that's not as important, especially when doing some kind of this rough modeling. You can do other software that will take care of much more extensive stuff. Uh, so you can even taper it. Now this is going to be a crude version of a taper, but let's just show you how I did the taper on those triangles so they hopefully nest. I haven't tried it out yet. I'm printing the second one now. You take this hole and tape, turn it at an angle, put it where you want it, and then combine the objects. And now you've chopped out that end. So obviously I didn't go all the way up, but you would chop that end off completely. Uh, and you can do round things. You can you, you, use any of the shapes that you can use, you can use to cut out. So that's Tinkercad. It is a very useful software, and you can do a lot of stuff in it. Now, there are some more advanced CAD softwares uh, that have more geometrical smoothing and things like that, but hopefully you enjoyed just taking a look at dipping our toe in at the possibility of creating things. Now, why that's important is you can create things, measure them for your board game boxes. You can measure out your box. You can put in, in fact, we'll design some, uh, we'll design a, a, a divider for a game that doesn't have one so that we can put cards and bits and things on there. So. Hopefully you enjoyed. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, Instagram at Dice Tower Brian. Go support the Dice Tower on Kickstarter. Let's rock this to the moon, just, just as high as we can go. Just to continue bringing the best board game software on the pl software. I'm still talking about Tinkercad. The best board game content on the planet. Let's keep going with some smorgasbord. Veritable buffet, or buffet, as Mr. Carson would say, because he ain't about that. So Brian apparently spoiled our Dice Tower software. That yeah, way. I was going to say, I've, got, uh, I've been working on that code for a long Gosh, time now. I know. All right, speaking of code, today we're talking about websites that we that we uh, frequent that are not board game websites. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you think that your number one website you go to is Board Game Geek? There's no think. 
Yeah, yeah. No, that's not even close. I was telling Z, I was looking, like, if you go on your phone and you open a new tab, it'll say for most frequently visited. Right. And the top four were all board game yeah. sites. I have a really, like, again, we're doing the top three websites that are not board game related pretty much at all. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't come up with more than three, I think. <laughs> it was, it that was, is hard. One of these is a too. stretch. Yeah. Two of them might be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For sure. Google. Like, no, no, cheat. You know, mm -hmm. uh, almost. Oh, Google's not on there, but it, it almost is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I don't feel bad about saying stuff like that. I don't need to give an esoteric. Well, one of mine is very esoteric. Mm -hmm. But the other two are not. They're big, giant things. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. yeah. That's what I spend my time on. All right. Yeah, it's mostly board game websites That's, for me. We'll let you go you know. last this time. Go ahead, okay. see. All right, so my first one's going to be the really obvious one, Amazon. I'm going to go to Amazon a lot. Oh, I didn't even think about Amazon. I, okay. I had it on there and I took it off. Oh, I yeah. forgot about Amazon. Yeah. And again, it's not for, I don't get board games from Amazon. If I, if I do, it's incredibly rare. Mm -hmm. So it's more for whatever else I need, whatever else is interesting. So I figured that one counts, you know. That's not true. A, not a lot else I'm going to say about Amazon. You've probably heard of it. I had it on here and crossed it off because I'm like, no, nah, that's, you know, who's going to put Amazon on there? Oh. <laughs> yeah. I do. I will say, though, I use Amazon so much. I'll see an ad for something. I'm like, is it on Amazon? Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I definitely, yeah, I definitely I'm do. I'm not that. Um, I don't always default to remembering some obvious things like, oh, I should look this up on Amazon. Well, I will tell you, working for a little while at the game store, <laughs> Um, it, it, it does not necessarily endear you to the people working at the yeah. game store to be walking through the shelves, looking at them and putting it into Amazon. Looking at them, putting it. That's a that, that's a tough thing. I it is I thought that I don't do it with board games, but I'll be somewhere else. Like I'll be at a a big box store yeah. or at a um, an electronic store, and you look at something, and you're like. Wonder how much that is Especially online. When you and get I don't want to pull it out and look at it because you know, that feels sure, super rude. Yeah. Especially when you can get it tomorrow, usually. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is it okay to take a picture of something and then go look at Amazon? Like, I don't that feel feels, bad about researching that feels a things. Though. Yeah, like, no. But if I'm taking a picture of an item yeah. and then I look it up my phone later to see if it's cheaper on I, Amazon, I, I think it's fair game. I think that. you know, I look, you're being a consumer, right? You're being a critical consumer, and you know why? Why spend more if you don't have to? The argument against some of the small business stuff is a kind of a different argument. You know what I mean? It oh, is. I, I agree. That. Again, if I can get something locally mm -hmm. and it doesn't cost me that much more, where I feel like, oh my gosh, I'm blowing away money and I, I can't. It's not right. limitless. Then yeah, I'll get it locally. I can get it right now. Right. And not necessarily. And again, I'm not being. I'm being kind of pragmatic here. Yeah. It's not even about like. I need to help this business stay in, in mm -hmm. afloat. It's more like, no, I want it right now, <laughs> even if it does come tomorrow. Yeah, but the, sometimes tomorrow or in two days is good enough. Yeah, the, the Rubicon I have not been able to cross. Uh -huh. That's my number three is Rubicon. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, maybe. is clothing on Amazon. I still don't feel comfortable buying clothing on Amazon. But you can now. Amazon. They have that thing where you can buy like several outfits, try them on, and send them ones back yeah. that don't fit. You know what I hate doing when I go clothes shopping? Trying stuff on. I don't care if I'm doing it at home. I don't care if I'm doing it at the mall. I want to go in and say, I think I'm this size. You I'm don't buy it. Wait, you don't try clothes on? I try them on. I just do it I love to very do that begrudgingly. Too, Mike. I love to do that. I like to go to the store and be like, I think I'm this size. Yeah, use the force. <laughs> I haven't had Oh, my, I wish in my heart of hearts. I was say, I'm this right, size. I definitely go through and go, I wish that was my size. I didn't have a second piece of cheesecake yesterday. I'm getting the mediums. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Anyway, my number my number three is my weird uh, website. And that is piperka.net. So excuse me? I Ooh. know. It's P-I-P-E-R-K-A dot N E T. And it's basically <laughs> It's definitely not a fishing website. It is not. It is it is a Web comic browser. Oh, okay. So you can go there, and what it will do is it, it shows you like every web comic ever in the history of humanity. Okay. And you can subscribe to them. So when I log into this website and go there, it will say all these comics have a new one at okay. their site. So then I can click those, yeah, and it will take me to the newest one and read through them. And I and I can let it sit there. Hmm. So like if I open it up right now, it might say you know. Um, Try to think of one of the uh, Goblins Incorporated or whatever. Uh, those, like, it will say six new. And I'm like, oh, great. And then I just read through those six. Boom, 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 okay. boom, boom. Okay. Hmm. It works really well. It's not, it's, it's very much 
Web 1.0 in a sense. It looks like Borg and Geek in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, on how it looks, but I like it because I like going through and seeing web comments. Any website that again sort of aggregates aggregates something you're interested in, and you can jump to it from that one place. Yeah, absolutely. There yeah. used to be a website, and I for I like me I can't remember what it was that did the same thing with blogs. I used to read all my blogs in one spot. This mm. was back when blogs were sure, more sure. of a thing. And then with that website the, went belly up, and then I stopped reading blogs. Yeah. The fire. What was that? What was that uh, blog uh, hosting website? Something fire. Oh, I know. What that you're everybody talking about. had yes. one. You know? Yes, 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 right. yes. But I can't remember what it was called. And we're thinking like you know we're we're, Way back. we're, we're reminiscing about <laughs> old garbage here. Yes. All right. What's your number three? All right. My number three is it's a clothing store. I, yeah, all right. Tryon.com. No, I think uh, the, I'm kind of the outlier in the studio here for the most part as being a sports fan. You know what I mean? Like a, a pretty, you know, I, I follow most of the major sports. Oh, your sports. ticket came through, didn't it? No, my ticket got refunded, man. The oh, golf, they're not playing a home playoff game. Oh. Yeah, they're probably not playing more than one playoff game. Let's ah, make it clear, see, unfortunately. Sorry. The third string rookie quarterback. Um, so my number three is ESPN.com. I go there all the or bleacherreport.com. Those are both kind of like the sports places I go, and so I go there weekly at least uh, okay. to kind of check on things during football season. Maybe more often. Okay. Um, but I follow all the major U.S. sports, and I even follow a little bit of the international stuff. So yeah, I go relatively frequently okay. to ESPN or Bleacher Report. Here's my second boring pick. <laughs> <laughs> eBay. Uh huh. I thought about eBay. I don't go to eBay very frequently, to be to be honest. I'm gonna go with YouTube. YouTube. I didn't put YouTube because I almost considered it. Never mind. It's so hard. Good choice. Yeah, yeah it consider is a good it a choice. website. But I yeah, mean, uh, no. Now. But I also look at a lot of board game stuff on YouTube. Right. So therefore, I don't. Mm. Okay. So he most even, of my YouTube. He doesn't even watch us. Right, right, right. I barely do. I mean, even sometimes. In person, he's, <laughs> you can't see right now, but his glass of a black strip here. So he doesn't have to look at this direction. I got him. blinders on like a horse, you know. <laughs> um, no, I do a lot of, I do looking at video game stuff or movie stuff. Yeah. A lot of that. It's actually my board game video consumption is second, uh, tertiary, I mm -hmm. guess, to both of those. Okay. So I at, counted at it. Point, I counted it because of that. At yeah. some point in the future, we will do top three non-board gaming YouTube channels. Yeah, that would okay. be an interesting okay. one. Yeah, I can do that fairly easily. Yeah, but yeah, would, YouTube again. I didn't feel like I was cheating on this one because it's not. I don't consume a lot of board game content on there. A little mm. bit, not a lot. Like I said, it's mostly movies and video games and just tech. Sometimes tech mm -hmm. people talking yeah. about this new piece of hardware or whatever. I like that stuff. So right. Chuck made me uh, self-conscious in the chat here by saying that my shoe was giving myself like a, a haircut or something, so like an Elvis hair. So I don't know what that means. Oh, I don't for know. your dice person. For my dice person. I had to ah, okay. Yeah. My number two is about as almost as big as YouTube, in a sense. Mine is Reddit. Now, Reddit gets Ooh, a lot I of don't garbage. Go in there. <laughs> okay, no, Reddit gets a lot of garbage, especially on the board game thing, although there are many channels that make board game Reddit look like the <laughs> nicest place on <laughs> earth. Sure. But there are a lot of really good... Reddit channels that I like to frequent. Like, for example, there's an, an AMA Reddit channel. Ask Me Anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which is all kinds of things. Not just fame. Sometimes famous people are in there, but sometimes a guy would be like, I'm a, I am was a pilot for Air Force One. Ask Me Anything. That's cool. That's that's really interesting. I like that sort of thing. You know, oh, I, okay. I, you know, I was a garbage man at the White House or whatever. Right, right, right. That sort of thing I really like. There's one that I... Uh, I'm... The, <laughs> It's not quite the name, but it's like, am I a jerk or not? Am I the jerk, yes. <laughs> That's not what it's called. But no. I like going there because I like reading people's stories and everyone <sighs> votes up as to whether they're a jerk or not. Um, I don't know how I feel about those because sometimes I feel like they're made up. Well, maybe they are. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. There's Today I Learned Reddit, which I like a lot too, yeah. which gives you different things that you can learn things. Not that I was today a year old. I know that bugs you. <laughs> okay. But just there's a lot of cool like different Reddits. There's technology ones. Yeah. Mm. If you just got to... You got to find them out, though. That's yeah, the problem. Reddit is a Reddit is a maze. I cannot uh, navigate. Mm -hmm. That's the problem with me. I go to Reddit. 
and I feel like I'm 86 and can't <laughs> figure out tech. Like I'm trying to program a VCR. Right, That's how yeah. I feel when I go to Reddit. I just have all I just have all the forums I like saved as their own thing. Yeah. And then I'll just go to one and then just read. I usually sort them by popular and just read those. I just, again, I feel stupid going to Reddit. That's I can't how I like feel with give Twitch. me a clickable icon. I want it to be very <laughs> obvious where I'm going and how I get there. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like going to Craigslist. Mm. I can't figure it out. It's all text based. I'm not sure what I'm like. Click a thing and like doop, five other text yeah. tags come out. I, I don't want to deal with it. Right. Pictures. Pictures that I can stick little Velcro animals on. Yep. Is it me? Nice? That was Reddit. It's oh. you. ESPN. YouTube, Reddit, you got to do something big. <laughs> well, no, it's not actually. It's Here funny because a couple of people are mentioning. Uh, Something that would be my second. Music is my other kind of big hobby outside of board gaming. Yeah. And so I, I, I do read a lot of music sites. They've, a couple people have mentioned All Music, which is a great site. That's almost like the same thing as Board Game Geek. It's more of like a, a kind of a database of music and, and things oh, along those lines. Oh, interesting. Never heard of it. But uh, yeah, it's very good. But I also, I, I put for my number two, Pitchfork. It's a magazine. A, it, 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 I think it was a physical magazine at one point, oh, but okay. now it's long since been a, a web only. It's a music critic site and and news and reviews of, of music. And al although I don't listen to new music as much as I used to, I still find myself, you know, I, I've always been interested in reading about music, even if it's not particularly an artist I'm interested in mm -hmm. to listen to. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So Rolling Stone, Pitchfork, All Music, all of those are ones I visit relatively regularly, but Pitchfork most often. Huh. That's not something I've done a lot of is, is read about music. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I used I to, especially when I worked at a music store, I used to voraciously. I guess, I guess no, that makes yeah. sense, right? You want to be well-informed, too. Yeah. Plus, if you like it, you like it. You know, you yeah, enjoy yeah. consuming it. Mm -hmm. Huh. All right. So disease number one. So he, he did Amazon mm -hmm. and then YouTube. Mm -hmm. And he said he thought those two might be cheats. So, oh, so this next one is not, this next one's a smaller site than those two? It's not small. It's not small at all. It's just mm. less, uh, it definitely will not be about board games in any way. Less of an aggregate, maybe. You know what I mean? Because Amazon, you can buy games on there, and YouTube, you can watch game stuff on there. This has nothing to do with board games. IMBD, IMDB, whatever. That's the, close, but not quite. A movie thing. It's going to be yeah. a movie site. It's the other obvious one. What? Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, okay. Oh, that's Rotten a good Tomatoes. one. Actually, that's yeah. a really good one. Uh, yeah, no, like... no, don't patronize me. <laughs> RottenTomatoes.com <laughs> is my number one. Outside of board gaming stuff is my number one, I think, okay. that I go to. Again, I like to read reviews just like you like mm. to read about music. Yeah. I like to read what critics or just people sometimes are saying about a movie. Kind of like what reception is it getting. I especially like to do it actually after I've seen a movie. Yeah. And then I go back mm -hmm. and I see how, how was you this, really like how was this yeah. received. Right. And I now know, because I've just seen it, you know. I'm like, well, okay, I can kind of see what they're saying. Oh, this person's way off base. I did not get that feeling. Whatever. I enjoy that. So Rotten Tomatoes for me is my One my of my problems one. with... I'm finding nowadays is a lot more of the newspapers that are online that do movie reviews and TV reviews. I'll go there and then there's a paywall. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Like, and then, or they'll let you read two free articles a month or right. whatever that's, nonsense. And that's actually making me stop going to some of these sites. That's been, I was going to say that my number one probably a few years ago would have been usatoday.com or cnn.com, although you, CNN's better. But now you can only read a couple of. of Articles, they'll they'll lock you out. Rolling Stone's the same way. That's why I don't put, I didn't put that I there. I like I actually subscribed to Rolling Stone for a mm -hmm. year because I like Alan Seppenwall, who's their TV reviewer. Yeah. But I can't keep paying money no. when I can get that stuff elsewhere. Right. Um, although you should support people that give you content. You um, anyhow, mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. um, my number one is also where I, I I look up a lot of stuff about movies, but it's a very different website, and I make no apologies for this website because I think it's frowned upon, especially in educational circles, and I don't care. Oh, I know what you're talking. My about. number one by a mile is Wikipedia, mm -hmm. and I don't care because I feel every time I use Wikipedia, I'm learning, and mm. I really like that. I can read about anything, and I'll read. Uh, often I go to Wikipedia because I'll see someone in a movie, I'm like, who is that? So instead of doing IMDb, I, I use Wikipedia because it's faster for mm. me. It will list the cast. And then I'll click that person's name. Then I read their whole little biography. Mm -hmm. I might click the links that go yeah. off into different things. Or I'll say, oh, they were in that movie. I'll click that movie. Oh, that movie took place in this city. 
Well, that's interesting. And then I'll learn about, I mean, I learned yeah. a lot of stuff. And yeah. yes, I know it's not research, blah, 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 blah. It is a ton of very good information. Yeah. And I learn a lot from it. I really wish what's his name would get out of my face every December to January. No. <laughs> yeah. I, yes. I, I don't stop. Don't scroll away. Give me two dollars. <laughs> Please, just two dollars. Uh, and again, um, that's great. It's incredible. I have it's donated to Wikipedia. Yes. Just, yeah, and, it's and, an and incredibly they never forget good that either. They're like, three years ago, you donated <laughs> this much money to us. I'm like, I know. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll do it again. I do think it's interesting that it's so frowned upon. It's silly. And I assume it's, it's merely silly. a knee jerk, maybe not a knee jerk reaction, but it's a reaction to the fact that, yes, it is so useful and therefore it's taken as uh, infallible. But uh, yeah. if you don't treat it as your source and only source for research purposes, uh, you know, or, or writing a paper, it's incredibly useful. Right, and they're also not lying about stuff. When yeah. I go there and it says the population of Greece is this amount, yeah. I'm not like, oh, I don't know if it's that amount or not. At least it's a good idea. Yeah. It's so funny, too, because a lot of times people will make the comparisons between Wikipedia and encyclopedias back in the day. Mm -hmm. And if you actually read what the method was for some of these encyclopedias, and not just the small ones, but like some of the big ones, mm -hmm. there was not necessarily always a very rigorous process in vetting really? the stuff that was going of into these encyclopedias. Of course, you weren't allowed to use encyclopedias for research. There there is that, was, yeah, too. That but, but, I mean, yeah, I think it's silly. I think that, you know... Wikipedia, I think, is a very valid source but of information. But I, I just like yeah. reading it because you find, and mm -hmm. I like the links. There's like a, every once in a while I play the Wikipedia game mm -hmm. where you have to get from one page to oh, another yeah, by yeah, clicking yeah. links. Oh, well, that's interesting. It's a fun kind of game because mm -hmm. you like, how do you get from, you know, Elvis to, you know, LA? Yeah. I mean, that's that one's actually not that hard. Six you degrees can do of. It. Uh, in, yeah, I think Wikipedia. that's what it's called. Yeah. But you can actually race other people mm. online. They'll like a race to see the first person. You can only click. There. You can't type. Yeah, that's interesting. I always win it because I just create a page that gets me there in <laughs> one. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, Mike. What do you got? All right, my number one is kind of a, I don't know. It feels almost like a little bit of a cheat because it's a site I go to once a day, every day. It's your own um, website. It's my own. No. Uh, it's Wordle. I, I still do Wordle every oh, okay. day. And I would have put Duolingo if I used their website. Instead, I have got it as an app on my phone. But I think Spoiler you could. for when we do our top three apps. You're right, right, right. Yeah. So I do Duolingo every day. But honestly, as frightening as it is, I probably spend more time on Wordle because it takes me longer. I really. I always, so you're still playing Wordle. I'm still playing Wordle. And I still always seem to get fours. That seems to, like the but my Why curve am I not is, seeing this on your Facebook page every day? Because I don't share it with anybody. <laughs> you need to share it. If I know anything about Wordle is, you need to share it every day. Well, you know. Today's was stuff. There Sweaty is a, guy. There is a and Discord. And then the Wordle. There's a Discord group that I'll share it in sometimes. But no, I don't put it on my Facebook. Put it on Reddit. I, Have I, you ever got a one? Never. I've gotten a two a few times. What's a one? What's a one? And you a just guess the right word. Luckily. Oh, got it. Get it on one. Get it on oh, one. Geez. Yeah, yeah. That's just a, you're just you know. That's, you know, yeah. thing is you use the same word every time. The one day you're like, I'll try a different word, mm -hmm. and then that's and that the was day. the word. <laughs> yeah. I do use the same starting word. A lot of people like to change up their starting words. I always use. The I same had a word. yeah. When I was playing it, it was definitely my word one and two were mostly the same. Yes, I have the same. Okay, so for discovery, of I have just the same letters. first word. If I get no hits on the first word, then I always have the same second word. I guess that maybe that's yeah. No, no, actually. Even if I got hits on the first one, unless it was like everything but one letter, yeah, I had a set second word with no repeats mm -hmm. and the next batch of most common letters. Yeah, I, I, yes, I kind of do that, but I think they say that it's kind of a red herring to go for the vowels, but that's what I do. I go for the vowels first. Yeah, yeah. So I'm yeah. trying to remember my two words were. What's your first word? My first word is Earth. Ooh, interesting. And my second word, if Earth doesn't get any hits, is pious. That hits all the vowels. Wow, pious. Mm -hmm. You got no R in there at all. You got no I have Earth, dude. Uh, pious only comes out if Earth doesn't hit. Oh, you're that's right. There's an R. There's a T in there. Mm -hmm. The only thing that you I got the P you in got there. The S, you got yeah. It's it's okay. You know what? No, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. My word was donkey. Oh, no, so you did you letters. did like <laughs> Matrix, right? You did the Matrix. D O N K Y. <laughs> yeah, Matrix. <laughs> <not> the, <laughs> I avoid the vowels. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's move on here. We'll be right back. Those are our top three websites. Hi, 
everybody, I'm Joey. And I'm Alex. And we're back with another edition of Shelf Storage or Sell. Yes, I'm excited. And the game we're talking about today is going to be, it's, it's a tough one. Yeah, so, I'm interested to see what people are going to say about this one. Yeah, exactly, because mm -hmm. people have very strong views both sides, and so yeah. do we. Mm. But before we get into that, it's a big week at yeah. the Dice Tower. It is. Because the Kickstarter has launched. Yeah. And for you, that I know a lot of you have backed it, but if you haven't, take a look, because there are some incredible things. Mm -hmm. And stretch goal wise, I think one of my favorites is the live RPGs. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. To get um, Tom and all the crew playing these RPGs. Because mm -hmm. I ended up playing uh, The Shivers, which mm -hmm. is a mm -hmm. RPG style game for the spectacular. And Tom was DMing. Yep. And it's just funny to see how much he embraces that. Because you can tell when certain things happen, he's like, oh, well, you're gonna do this and this. Not reading from it. He's acting like he's reading the back. and. He's not. So I'm, afterwards, I was like, you've got to do this. Mm. You've got to go RPG. And that's something they haven't done. Yeah. Just to see that, and that's really, it was a lot of fun. And I think to see the Dice Tower crew do that would be great. But now, promos. Yes. That's one of my favorite things. I love promos. I love promo cards. Yeah, and the Dice Tower mm -hmm. promos are the best. I mean, as I far know, as I like getting them. them at all the different cons, mm -hmm. that's one of my main thing. And adding them to games just adds that extra oomph, you know? Oh, absolutely, yeah. So I'm looking forward to the Oswan promo, the yep. Foundation of Rome promo, Tiny Town, the Raw and Wright, and Catacombs. All right, so yeah. I'm all of those, I'm also looking for the Picture Perfect. Did yes, you see that I one? Yes, I saw that one too. Tainted Grail. Yes. Unmatched. Yes. Clank Catacombs. Yes. Marvel United. Mm -hmm. And then Space Base. Space Base is one of those games that never goes away. No, Space Base is such a it's great so game. It's so good. Mm. And it fits into this segment perfectly because adding those little promo cards to these games just gives you that oomph. Yeah. You know, when you they can save a game up. that you're thinking about getting rid of, but you're like, oh, I've got all these promos. I'm going to keep it. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So make sure if you haven't looked at it, take a look at it because oh, yeah. they do so much here at the Dice Tower. They do. And that's just our small way of giving back to back that and mm -hmm. put those in our games. All right, so anyway, what we're talking about today is one that, again, it's a hard one. It is. This one hurt. It is. Yeah, speaking of hurt, mm. I'm the one who has to pick this up. <laughs> I know. So, I can, I'm looking forward to seeing how you do this. I don't know how I'm going to yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah. But today we are talking about. Da, 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 da. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Villainous. Yeah, there's still like a just few behind. Gonna set there we this. go. Right in front of your face. So anyway, <laughs> no. All right, so yeah. let me move this. Whoa. All right, so these are yeah. all of our villainai. Yeah, we've been pretty good about when there's a new expansion or a new edition, we do get it. So we do yeah. have all of them. We've got, I'm going to set this back down. Okay. Okay, so villainous, mm. you guys get the point. Ugh. I think they do. One of my things I was going to say about Villainous is that it takes a lot of shelf space, as you can clearly see. It does. Yeah. And when it first came out, it was one of those you played a couple times, yeah. got the next expansion, we yeah. were excited, mm -hmm. excited. I got a Gen Con promo for it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Ex you know, excited, excited, excited. Keep yeah. going yeah. back and forth. But then they've stopped hitting the table. Yes, they have. We keep buying them when they mm -hmm. come out, mm -hmm. but they stop hitting the table. And for a couple of reasons. One, I think because... I liked the game at first because every single character was different. Different yeah. winning conditions, different playing conditions, everything's different. But then that becomes harder and harder to teach. That's what, So my big point about this game is that it's not a good gateway game. It's not a good game for beginners because it's harder and harder to teach the the new gamers this game. And this right. is, is a game that you think new gamers want to play, but they don't. It's it The fate deck and everything like that makes it more challenging for new gamers to play. It is. And another yeah. thing is... As you all, and it's unarguable that the mm -hmm. game is brutally unbalanced. Yeah. Because, and you have to be, because you've got so many different win conditions, yeah. characters, and all that. And it's and it's kind of fun mm -hmm. finding that out and knowing that it's more of a challenge if you take this guy over this guy. And that right there is, it's it's a good thing, but it's also a bad thing as yeah. far as that balance is off. Yeah. Now, on the plus side, the artwork is gorgeous. Oh my goodness, it's amazing. The production of this game is incredible. I, it is. Yeah, I do really love, every time I open this game, I'm like, oh, it looks so great on the table. So, so good. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the miniatures, the way they have the, the kind of abstract look to yeah, them, yeah. it's great. Yeah. But all of that and the game, rec the name recognition it's got, mm -hmm. And the fact that it's addictive to buy every single one that comes out. Yeah. Because now they, well, they went into Marvel and yes. they just started into Star Wars. Yes. So they're going to be pushing every single one of those. 
And it's going to be one of those things, do we want to keep up with that? Yes. Or do we not? Eventually it's going to be a whole shelf by itself just for Villainous. Yeah. yeah. So I don't I don't know because it's not hitting the table. One thing I was going to say too, we're huge Disney fans, so I love everything Disney. I think there are better Disney games out there. Like I really like Haunted Mansion, Souls right. Arena. And in terms of a party game, Disney Color Brain I think is the best, right? I do like that one. Like it's yeah. just a pure party game, right? So I think sometimes there are better Disney games out there as well. There are. Mm -hmm. And... So it's one of those things that, I don't know, I don't know where I sit on it. Where do you sit, shelf, storage, or sell for this one? I am sell. You're sell. I'm a sell, yeah. I hate to say it, that hurts to say it, but I feel like I'm a sell. See, I think yeah. I'm storage on this one only because <laughs> yeah. I'm not ready to get rid of it yet, but I'm almost ready to slow down and buy the new stuff and just give it a while to see. What mm -hmm. I don't want is I don't want to have that regret. I don't want yeah. to get rid of it, and then we end up playing it at somebody else's house or whatever. And we're like, ah, oh, then we have to buy it all again. <laughs> so that's a big thing too. But we got to figure it out. So I would like to hear what you guys have to yes, say about I be interested to know. Marvel Villainous. Because it came in hot. <coughs> and Sorry, I try not to do this to the microphone. Yeah. So I was in. like, I can hold it. I can hold the cuff. I cannot. Spoiler. She couldn't hold <laughs> it. So anyway, I want to hear what you guys say about Marvel yeah. Villainous because that is... It's taken up two shelves at this point. It and is. It's just going to grow it from there. So, okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, thank you guys so much. And again, check out that Dice Tower Kickstarter Absolutely. for a lot of incredible promos. Yeah. But we promos. will see you guys next on week. the channel later this week yeah. and next week. <coughs> I'm sorry, it again. Perfect. Well, thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Hey, so this is gonna be hard to believe, but at one point all of us were in college. Hmm. We all wow. graduated. Wow, rude. Well, rude. I'm saying about myself. <laughs> you oh. obviously have a doctorate, honorary, <laughs> given out by us mm -hmm. <laughs> from my middle school. <laughs> <laughs> no, um. So in college, my freshman year, I remember very specifically in my business class I took because I was gonna get in the business. Then didn't, then did. Um, they gave us an opportunity to either pick a solo project or a group project. <laughs> and I thought a group project sounded fun. Use a dummy. Because I was homeschooled. <laughs> you got guys. Use and a since dummy. Since I was homeschooled, I was like, hey, yeah. I get to meet other people and work mm -hmm. with other people. <laughs> <laughs> you I can't got, think got. of any time that they would give me an option between a group and a solo project that I would be like, working with a group sounds great. It sounds yeah. like a better uh, choice. Mm -hmm. Well, we had to make a product uh -huh. and then do research paper. And I still remember this. The whole thing fell apart because we made these, um, like, we made up energy bars that increased your muscles and uh -huh. stuff like that, yeah. something like that. And we did the presentation and some kid was like, um, what if kids eat them? And we were like, ah, <laughs> totally destroyed. <laughs> like, <laughs> it never occurred to us, like, kids should eat stuff like this, and what do you do? And there was no warning labels or anything. Mm. Anyway, Got it. but the group project was terrible okay. that I found out because I am like, let's get it done, let's get it done. Mm -hmm. We all get together for the first meeting. I was like, you do this, you do this, you do this. I ended up doing 60% of the work. I, there was someone else who also did a decent amount, but that was it. And then at the end, we all degrade each other. And I was like, well, I'm giving zeros out to these people because they didn't help. And it was just a mess. It was oh, a mess. Oh, that's horrible. You've had similar experiences? Oh, I've had similar experiences on both on both ends. Both. You were the guy not doing any work. No. Well, see, well, that, teacher, I was getting ready like to say this. I was getting ready to say this. No one ever steps up and says, yeah, I'm the one. I don't do anything on a group project, right? You that's always true. hear people complaining. I do yeah. all the work. I do all the work. All the, I do all the work. Thankfully, in college, I didn't have that many group assignments. I mean, there were some, and yes, there were some that were disasters. There were others where people kind of all pulled their own weight. But also as a teacher, you know, I assigned group projects and I tried doing the peer, the peer reviewing, you know, the peer grading, and that was always a complete mess because it was always just like, I hate this kid, I'm giving him an F. I like this kid, I'm giving him an A. This is my friend, this isn't my friend, that type of a thing. Yeah. I, I'm not aware of this whole self-policing thing. Yeah, it doesn't work very that well. That sounds horrible. That sounds like a social experiment about to explode. <laughs> it's squid game is what it is. Yeah. It's squid game. Yeah, no, it, it's it's frustrating because I think group projects have the, the potential of being very, you know, beneficial, but they're usually not pulled off well. But they also, you need to do them in a yeah. sense because, like someone just said in chat, 
We're working as a group now. Right. We the Dice Tower is a group project. Yes. I mean, uh, you might say that I'm the project leader, mm -hmm. but I can't do everything here. Right. right. That would be really bad. And if you go to a job and you're like, ah, I'm not gonna do anything, likely you will not be at that job very long. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, the reason I'm talking about group projects is someone compared that to cooperative board gaming. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was a very interesting topic because we often talk about the alpha gamer and mm -hmm. a board gamer where they move pieces for everyone else. Yeah. But I think there's a beta gamer. Mm. Someone who will sit there and go, what do you think I should do? And they'll do it the whole game. Yeah. And not necessarily because they're bad you know i was thinking back you know you said that no one wants to admit that they didn't do any work right but let's say you're working with somebody who is very much like let's get it done i'm like well you know what you can do it that yeah. saves me trouble right 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 and that can happen in a board game i said they're like oh man i can't figure out all this stuff and you'll say no i understand it i'm like oh good then i have to do less work in my mind sure mm -hmm. sure you you can slip into like you're saying that beta position right i think if you're fluid about it mm -hmm. and at different moments in a game, maybe you are conflicted. Maybe you don't know what you want to do right now. And you go, ideas, anybody. Right, I right, mean, right. And somebody steps up. I'm happy to slide into that you know, second, third position and just put something on somebody else while I recalibrate. I figure out. And at some point, maybe I'll be like, I think I have a solution for this issue over here. Let me step up to you know, lead. Um, yeah. That's the best uh, sort of outcome I think I can hope for, mm -hmm. that folks are fluid in where they sort of fall in. But I've definitely found myself in the situation where someone is an incredibly alpha gamer and I settle in the back and just go, okay, it's just mostly to reduce, the ride here, yeah. it's to reduce friction at the end of the game. Yes, you know? yes. Yeah, I do think that the the analogy between cooperative games and group projects. I mean, it's an obvious one, and it kind of makes sense. I do think yeah, it's interesting. That's obvious, Tom. Okay, your topic is obvious. No, no, no. I'm saying <laughs> because they're, they're both collaborative activities, right? And, and so it makes sense. It's, I know. I think it's an interesting topic. Um, mm. It's interesting -ish. Uh, <laughs> We'll be grading each other at the end of the cooperative right, right, game. Exactly. Like, uh, we won, but Z, D minus. <laughs> it is funny, though. I think that both of these things, both of these activities, group projects and cooperative games, do kind of bring out or emphasize certain aspects of people's personalities. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You have the natural leaders, mm -hmm. right? You'll see that in both. You've got the people that will pick their shots. They don't say a lot, but when they do, it's usually something like, oh, so you tend to listen to them. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because right. they don't say a lot, but when they do. Uh, Roy and I have actually talked about this when it comes to cooperative games. We have both found that we're like, okay, what is the ultimate goal? That's what we're going to do. Yes. I'm not going to be distracted by side quests. I'm not gonna, that's it. Oh, we need to do this? Sometimes you that's have what we're doing. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes, yeah. Don't shake keys at me. I'm not paying attention to the keys. I want this over here. Whereas Tom is jumping at the keys. He loves the keys. This is why I spend wow. so much time on Wikipedia. <laughs> because wow. cause I'll go from one article, because I'm like looking up some information and I'll be like, all right. I could learn about that right now. I should be finishing yeah. this project over here, but wow. But yeah, but do you see what I mean? How it kind of it, it emphasizes certain aspects of people's act. Tom is an personality. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you, you're an explorer, right? I like to I like to see stuff. Yeah, and I could do that at an expense of winning, whatever. Winning is a strong thing because I do want to win. The main goal, but I'm like, I'm a, I'm I, I think a better way to put this, and maybe Tom is with me on this because I'm a little bit like that. But the way I like to think of it is, I like new experiences. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm going for the the experience of. I know what it's like to follow this path to the win because mm -hmm. it's repetitive and I'm doing the same thing. Yeah. You know, if you like turn this handle, you'll win. Mm -hmm. Keep doing that. Yeah, but if I if I crumble up this plastic bottle, that's a new feel and experience. Let mm -hmm. me try that. Mm -hmm. I know what the spinning the wheel feels like. Let yeah. me try this. Ooh, that's satisfactory. Ooh, what about that? What happens if I like you know pull on this uh, rubber band over here? So yes. I end up getting distracted as well, <laughs> but I'm seeking fun at the yeah. end of the day. I'm not yeah. necessarily seeking an, a win above enjoyment. Yeah, but I it's guess. so funny though because I think of myself as someone that's not that concerned about winning most games, even in cooperative you games. You play solo games so that you won't lose to other people. That's not why. That's I the play only reason you do solo gaming, Mike. You've admitted this to me openly many a time. <laughs> 
I do like to explore too, but it's just funny. Like in cooperative games, I tend to find like, okay, what's the main goal? That's what I'm going to focus on, mm -hmm. type of a thing. So I don't know. I just I think it's I think it's interesting that it emphasizes or kind of brings up different aspects of people's personalities. Both of them do. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So. Again, for me, being part of a group is a. I'm all about sort of figuring out where I fit in that group, reading yeah. the group, feeling the group, and be like, I slot in right here, boom, and and you know, benefiting myself and others from that. I don't know if you guys have heard this, but I've also heard that there's even more of an emphasis on group projects and group group activities in especially higher education now because this is what employers are saying that they value more than a lot of other things. Oh my word, well I told right? you that when I'm looking for someone on Dice Tower, yeah. one of my biggest things is how well do you get along with other people? Right. right? Everything else can be taught. It's it's mm -hmm. hard to teach cooperation. Communication, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Collaboration, being able to have the social skills to, you know what I mean? Yeah. All of those things actually also come out in cooperative gaming. And I assume it's a reactionary move towards the fact that in our modern, you know, uh, world, our modern lives, there's a lot more of sort of being... You know, head down in the phone, mm -hmm. not a lot of interaction, dealing with people online, not yeah. face to face, mm -hmm. texting instead of talking on the phone, even. Mm -hmm. There's less interaction, literal human interaction. So I think they're emphasizing that in education. Right. In order to sort of bring you up to speed, honestly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. with previous generations that had to go out and meet somebody face to face and shake their hand and look them in the eye and all of that stuff. Right. So, so cooperative games. They're good for you. I think they are very good for you. They're easier to teach oftentimes. Mm -hmm. Yes. They're, They're because you can help somebody without help. Right. Yeah. You don't mm -hmm. have to be like, oh, I can't look at your cards, but maybe you have this card. Yeah, like look at the rule book, find your, find your card and read right. what it does. No, oh, let me see it. I can help you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they're easy to teach. They, they bring people together. You just need to be mindful if you are a teacher that you're not destroying the group project by wanting to do all the work yourself. Right. Well, there you go. All right, folks, and that is it. Don't forget, we have a Kickstarter running right now, mm. and we'll be back in four hours at 2 o'clock to talk about our 10 most anticipated games of the year. Ooh. Until then, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Mike Delicio. I'm Z Garcia. And we're working together. Aw.